beautiful disaster, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of her, who hurt you? The first question comes to mind when I open my mouth to greet her. Although it wasn't the easiest to reach, I knew her heart was pure. Gentle to the touch, yet stubborn as a bull. She made it hard to resist her. Unintentionally, she sank her hooks in me. She was the calm before my storm. A thunderous, darkening storm with lightning that graciously exposed the paternity of my brother and me. Though the gloom of it all lingered above both our heads, the winds that accompanied the storm were the breath of fresh air that I needed. Instead of hovering clouds producing gazillions of little droplets of rain, they showered me with new siblings, nieces, nephews, sisters-in-laws, and brother-in-laws. For so long, it had just been me, my mother, my cousins, and my brother. But then there was her, and eventually, them. Simultaneously, I found my father and my forever, and I was ready for whatever when it came down to both of them. Victim of my despair. That's what I believed him to be. Why must you continue hurting yourself to love me? It's the question I desperately wanted to ask the man who sees no flaws in such a flawed woman. Persistent? He was, unintentionally making it most difficult to bury my trauma. Forgetting the past and what it had done to me wasn't easy. I've lived with the consequences of it all each and every day. But him? He made me want to. The issue was I couldn't. Not for him. Not for me. Not for our future. So instead of stringing him along, I prayed each day that he'd find someone to fill the void that his heart must have suffered from. Because I couldn't. But he didn't want anybody else. He wanted me. And I didn't have myself to give, not to him, and not even to me. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile. And we are here for the spinoff of the Eisenberg Effect to the Domino Effect with Ledge being part one, and then his twin brother, Law, is part two. Whew, baby, let's jump right into this thing. So, I think this might be my favorite story. Um, I, I still haven't decided. I think it's Luca, then it's Ledge, then I'll put Lyric, uh, Lyric, yeah, then I'll do Lake, then I'll do Law. Law is at the, the very bottom but we're going to get into that. So anyway, this is about Lich today. So uh, let's start with Halo. So uh, this is Ledge and Halo story. Halo, ooh, oh, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. This story contains um, talks of sexual assault and molestation that's what it is because i was like is that the right term because no she was a child so molestation so i'm so sorry if that is a trigger for you please click off of this story and i'll see you back um next episode when we talk about law so if you stuck around um my baby halo she was molested as a child by her mom's boyfriend and it continued, I believe she was six, to the age of 14. And at that age, she finally moved in with her grandmother. And she only had her grandmother for a small amount of time before she passed away and she was on her own. And after that, when she moved into her apartment, she does not leave the house. She just... um. There's a condition for it. I cannot pronounce it, so I'm not going to do that to y'all. <laughs> uh, just say both of us in time. But there is a clinical term for it, and she has it, and she just does not leave her house. But she's fighting every day to, like, battle that um, her situation. So it's just like she'll try to leave. She'll get close to the door. But as soon as she does it, she's like, I can't do this. And so she'll back away. So... One day she's having that talk where 
I'm going to do it. I'm going to go outside. And she works up her nerve to go outside. So she opens her door. She steps out. And as soon as she does, her neighbor by the name of Camber is there. And she's like, you know, what are you doing? And um, she's like, you know, I'm outside. She's like, I can see that. And she kind of makes a big deal out of it to where... Halo was like, fuck it, I'm going back inside. She's like, no, I'm just so excited. But it's like, you know the kind of person she is, so why would you do this to her? Camper kind of got on my nerves personally. And, like, she was a great friend to Halo. So let me say that first. Uh, Camper, like, she's a great person. But me personally, she got on my nerves. Because it's just like, girl, you know the type of person that your friend, your neighbor is. So you doing the most when she's trying to build up courage, like, back your ass up but she's like um halo wanted to come outside because she's she convinced herself that she was going out so she's like i need to go get some clothes like what would i wear to go out so they get dressed and they go out now while they're out halo meets ledge and you know she done got her some liquid courage um and they go back to his house and they get it on so it's just like, oh, my girl not only went outside, but she also had consensual sex because that's what she wanted to do. And so um, he takes her home and basically doesn't hear from her again. And he was kind of feeling her, but it's just like it wasn't meant to be. So some months pass by and... Halo finds out that she's pregnant. Now, she wasn't going to tell him because it's just like, when I finally go outside, look at what happens to me. And she kind of didn't want no more contact with him because she didn't want to pull him into her world and what she does. Now, she has a job that pays her very well that allows her to stay in her home and she doesn't have to leave. So it's just like, I'm good. I don't need to talk to him, whatever. But... um they get in contact again and he pulls up to her apartment you know trying to talk to her get her to come out and she won't until he runs into uh camber and she lets him know like she has this condition she's not going to open the door for you you know none of that but um he starts bringing her food buying gifts for the baby um oh no they i forgot they ran into each other i think it was at target because he was buying some stuff like you know for all his new family members that he learned that he had through the eisenbergs and um that's how he found out that they had a baby coming but yeah so he starts buying things bringing them over um he wrote her a letter just like you know just let me talk to you let me see you you know i never want to hurt you just let me in and it's just oh my heart went out to her because she's like i want to so bad but that crippling fear like she could not do it and so it's just like where you may feel frustrated with her at times it's just like you just don't understand like you want to but fear grabs a hold to people and just will not let go so um i think one day she just felt like no it's the way he said it was just like you know i'm trying i need you to meet me halfway and it's like he goes to leave and i think uh that was at the point where he told her you know i'm not gonna bother you anymore i just you know whenever you feel like reaching out you can do it so that's when she opens the door and lets him in so you know he's like i'll just sit on the couch like i just want to be in the same space as you like i'll sleep on the couch because it was like what two three o'clock in the morning he's like i just want to be near you in some capacity so um they do that and i think the next morning she went to go take a shower so and it's mold in her house he's like man you can't stay here y'all not staying here you know at least until they fix it come move in with me now i'm gonna pause it right there because i want to jump into what I started to touch on in the last episode about Ledge. So, you know, he finally got in contact with the family and, you know, they started to meet up. Now, one day he uh, invites 
it was Liam and Luca to lunch, you know, just to talk. And he told Law, he was like, you know, if you want to meet them, they're going to be here. Law, like, nigga, you the one that wanted daddy in a relationship with that nigga. I'm good. I've been fine without him all these years. Fuck him. Fuck them brothers that you want to. You know, like, I'm your only brother. Law was really in his feelings. Like, he really is another, like, two sensitive ass niggas. And I loved it. <laughs> but, uh, so when he comes to the club one day, I mean, the bar, one day that day he got the attitude like with luca and uh daddy liam being there he like man why the fuck you got these two here and you know liam liam and luca because luca is the calm one too now if lake would have been there it would have been a different story because like uh law even pulls out his gun and luca just sit back like don't ever pull that bitch out unless you plan on using it and if it's my time to go it's just my time to go but you know you don't put no fear in my heart little nigga now, just like I just told your brother, I'm willing to accept you with open arms. You know, I love you because you're my son. Now, do with that what you will. And so after that, uh, well, they all met up at Baisley's restaurant. And Law and Lake together is just a mess, child. It's like they don't know whether they love each other or they want to fight each other. So the beginning was rocky, but then they, uh, you know, they pull it together. And so, uh, what do I want to say? But back to that meeting, though. Well, not meeting, but lunch that they had together. That's when um, Ledge was telling Liam and Luca about the plans he had for the bar. Because because it's fairly new, like, they see the vision. The vision is there. He just didn't have the money to put into it to get it to where they wanted it to be. Because while... I think Law is like a partner, but this is more so a uh, Ledge's baby. So they like, how much money you think it's going to take to uh, make your vision happen? So it's like a couple million. They're like, okay, shit, let's get it popping. You know, money is nothing. And we look out for family. So it is what it is. So he like, you know, just that quickly, it's like, damn, my dream is coming together and I'm going to make this into what I want it to be. So, boom. Okay, so back into uh, Legend Halo. So, Halo, they get to his apartment, I mean, his apartment, his house, and it's like set up. Was that at that point? Yeah, I think Lake had set up his house. You know how the rest of them got it set up with the security and all that type of stuff. Woo, 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 woo. Um, and they just get into this routine of, you know, being a couple of, he moves her into her own bedroom. Like, you know, you can stay here and, you know, no pressure just until they get your place all fixed up. Um, and then you can move back out. But for right now, you can have this space. You know, I'm not going to pressure you. I'm not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. This is your space. So she's like cool but you know it's a back and forth thing it's like i'm cool with this then it's like i cannot believe i'm here i want to go back home and like i said they fall into this routine they're starting to get closer and um she mentions like going back home he's like man i want you to move in here with me you know we can all be here together i want to raise our baby here in this house and so she's on the f fence about it she doesn't flat out say no, but she's like, I'll think about it. So then um, he introduces Halo to Lyric. Was it Lyric and Ever? She met Baisley too, but it's like she kind of got close with Ever and Lyric because they brought over stuff for the baby. They took her to hang out. And, you know, Ledge realized he's like, my baby needs some friends. Like, that's another thing that will pull her out of her shell if you will and um what was it i think they were out like doing something and her water broke and you know so they rushed to the hospital she has the baby that's great and it was like was it a month i forgot how old the baby was that's not even a thing so because she had been assaulted as a child and she just doesn't trust anybody period but she also is like weary of 
leaving ledge by with the baby alone and he finally calls her out on it he's like you know you don't sleep for too long you won't let me hold the baby for too long you know you're just always around and just won't let yourself re- relax and it's like you know i'm not gonna do i know how to take care of my baby like i got this you can calm down and she says something i forgot what it was but it was crazy um and he was like what that's how you feel and it hurt his feelings because basically she she flat out told him like i don't trust you you could you could um she either told him you could be or you're most likely just like the man who had assaulted her and when she said that it was kind of like he what is it like i clean my hands of the situation i can't do this with you so you know he's like we'll figure out a schedule and you know we'll just go back to living in our own separate homes and i'll just come see my baby and although she knows she fucked up she didn't say nothing to make it right and that's kind of what pissed me off because it's just like at some point though halo sweetheart we gotta let this go because you was doing good you was making so much progress and then just to hit that man with the you know basically i don't trust you you could be just like him it's like man that's kind of fucked up ain't it um but you know of course in the end they work it out and end up getting back together so um what was oh they had a daughter and that was another thing too duh of course i don't know why i uh drew a blank on that so it's like yeah of course the fact that they have a daughter she's like i'm just not mm -mm, i'm not doing this with you and so it's just like she goes back into her shell but then it's led just like i'm not letting this happen like i want to be with you we're supposed to be together we gonna be together you know boom bow and so there uh well wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute yeah so he proposes of course she accepts because it's just like uh oh yeah she was pregnant again at the end of the book so now they're having two babies and so it's just like of course um and the last thing that she says to him is don't give up on me and he says can't do it pretty lady and that was his nickname for her throughout the whole book pretty lady but yeah he was like can't do it won't do it which he didn't because like every time she pulled back and retreated he was right there to follow up like we gonna make it work we gonna get through this <sighs> so yeah it's a beautiful story <sighs> child our problem child is next mr law that <laughs> <laughs> while it may be my least favorite story it mm, that shit was crazy I'm, you know what i'm gonna revisit that and come back maybe at the end of the next episode i'll rank them again and see if that stays true for me. i might actually go back and reread them too anyway peace and blessings my beautiful people